Congenital Cardiac Defects with Obstruction to Systemic Blood Flow by Patricia Lincoln. Hello, my name is Trish Lincoln. I'm the clinical nurse specialist in the cardiac ICU at Children's Hospital Boston. Today's lecture will provide information on the most common congenital heart defects and their surgical repairs. The heart defects that I will be discussing are those with obstruction to systemic blood flow. Introduction and Pathophysiology What will happen with congenital heart defects that cause an obstruction to systemic blood flow? The blood in the heart is unable to flow out to the body. This occurs due to a restriction, underdevelopment, or defect in a valve, vessel, or chamber on the left side of the heart. The pressure in the left side of the heart increases. As pressure increases in the left atrium, the pulmonary veins returning the blood from the lungs are unable to empty into the left atrium. Since the pulmonary veins are unable to empty, pulmonary congestion results. Pulmonary congestion increases right ventricular workload as the right ventricle attempts to pump against the increased pressure in the lungs. The signs and symptoms of obstruction to systemic blood flow depend on the severity of the lesion and degree of obstruction. If the obstruction is mild, the patient may have no symptoms. Diagnosis is made on auscultation of a murmur that occurs as blood flows through the area of obstruction. If the obstruction to systemic blood flow is severe, the patient may present with congestive heart failure and low cardiac output. Signs and symptoms of congestive heart failure and decreased cardiac output. With small to moderate obstruction to systemic blood flow, these patients may be slightly pale or dusky. If it's a baby, they may have difficulty with feeding and peripheral pulses will be decreased, especially in the lower extremities. If there is severe obstruction to systemic blood flow, these patients will have very decreased peripheral and central pulses. There may be delayed cap refill. The patient will be dusky in color. They probably will, probably will experience respiratory distress and urine output will be decreased. Aortic stenosis. The defect with obstruction to systemic blood flow that I will be discussing is aortic stenosis. The aortic valve is located between the left ventricle and the aorta. Aortic stenosis occurs when the aortic valve is unable to open properly and completely. It is difficult for blood to flow forward from the left ventricle to the aorta. Aortic stenosis occurs for a number of reasons. The aortic valve may only have two leaflets instead of three leaflets. The valve leaflets may be partially fused together. The leaflets may be too thick to open all the way. Or the valve may have been damaged by an infection. There are three types of aortic stenosis. The first type, valvular aortic stenosis, which is present in 75% of aortic stenosis cases. The cusps may be fused or abnormally formed, bicuspid, small, thickened, or misshaped. If the valve tissue itself is thick and rigid, calcification may be occurring. In the second type, supervalvular aortic stenosis, there is usually an hourglass constriction located at the sinus of Valsalva. This type of aortic stenosis is often associated with Williams syndrome. In the third type of, val of aortic stenosis, it is subvalvular or subaortic aortic stenosis. This occurs in about 10% of the cases. In subvalvular or subaortic aortic stenosis, there is a short or long segment of membranous diaphragm present in the ventricular outflow tract, or there may be a fibrous ring present that encircles the left ventricular outflow tract. There are two approaches to the repair of aortic stenosis, commissurotomy and valvuloplasty, which is an excision of the fibrous ring or bands or a splitting of muscle bundles around the valve. Or the second approach, valvulotomy, which is a dilation of the valve annulus with a finger or instrument.
Postoperative concerns following repair of aortic stenosis are aortic insufficiency. If the valve does not close properly, the pressure in the aorta during diastole, the resting phase of the heart when the coronaries are perfused, will be decreased. This may decrease blood flow through the coronary arteries, the blood vessels that supply the heart with its needed nutrients. Aortic regurgitation. If the valve is not competent, there will be backflow from the aorta through the valve. This will decrease the pressure in the coronary arteries and the heart muscle may not receive adequate blood flow. Left ventricular dysfunction or hypertrophy. The heart muscle has had to pump against an obstruction and may be overworked and not contract well. Arrhythmias, especially heart block. This may be caused by left ventricular dysfunction, increased pressure on the left side of the heart, or heart muscle damage from decreased coronary blood flow. Hypertension. High pressure in the aorta may add undue stress on the newly repaired aortic valve. Also, congestive heart failure and or pulmonary congestion. These are related to the presence of severe systemic obstruction during the preoperative period in the patient that is now postoperative. Please help us improve the content by providing us with some feedback.